before we start, what we're going to go through is just a very brief introduction of uh, who we are. Basically, um, we are under NOL, uh, Neptune Oriental Line, based out of Singapore. And basically, we have actually um, three major lines of businesses. One is the terminal operations. Um, the other is container shipping, which is APL, our flagship carrier. And of, of course, we have glo uh, global supply chain management, which is APL Logistics. If you look at APL Logistics, basically what we provide is end-to-end -end supply chain uh, products basically and services so that uh, we complement with um, any type of um, ocean shipping uh, services that we may provide from APR as well as various other carriers. So typically what we do is we operate as uh, freight forwarders as well as consolidate, uh, consolidations. And if you look at our uh, range of services, basically we have services from warehouse management, uh, to freight forwarding, to consolidation, to last mile trucking, domestic trucking, well it's, it's what a typical freight forwarder um, provide as a service. Um, but what we do differentiate is that we do have a very strong uh, IT layer of technology that we provide to our customers and basically we enable our customers to see um, the supply chain in basically real time as we manage their supply chain. So if you look at um, our suite of products, uh, what we do have is, like, like I mentioned earlier, warehouse management. Right, We have uh, more than 15.6 uh, 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 square feet of, of warehouse space worldwide. Uh, we provide global freight management, uh, whether it is door-to-door, port-to-port, or domestic trucking, for example. We, we, do have, we do provide this service. We do supply chain management. Basically, we uh, look at inventory levels of customers. We manage the inventories. Uh, we have, um, basically, uh, different type of services, for example, retail distribution networks uh, or direct-to-door services that we provide. And we also uh, in innovated a lot of different types of uh, industry services. For example, uh, one of our uh, crown jewel is basically the Ocean Guarantee product for LCL, which actually is cheaper than uh, cheaper than air, but it's in between ocean in terms of uh, ocean and air in terms of the transit time. So if you do not uh, meet timings for uh, ocean freight, for example. Let's say you need to get from um, Singapore to, to uh, Los Angeles, but you do not have enough uh, lead time because of your, some supply issue at the carrier, at, at the supplier, sorry. So basically, you can actually uh, look for ocean, uh, ocean Guarantee as a service, which basically provides you shorter lead time uh, than Ocean, so that the product still gets there on time, but basically at much, much uh, lower cost. Um, in terms of uh, our services as well, we provide uh, um, manufacturing support. So uh, many of the uh, companies do have various vendors um, out there in Asia or uh, Middle East, um, uh, Latin America, for example. So we provide a lot of vendor management services. So we help your vendors uh, to, to basically uh, deliver their goods on time so that we can deliver uh, your goods to your door on time. Um, in terms of consolidation, what we provide is uh, an opportunity for customers to use us as 3PL basically to uh, consolidate your goods. Uh, instead of doing a lot of direct ships in small containers, we basically consolidate uh, your goods into uh, bigger containers and we will manage um, customers' uh, carrier commitments and to make sure that uh, cargo arrives on time and at the right quantity and basically meeting your, your um, carrier commitments. So what, what brings us to OTM is that we, we have been um, sourcing for a solution uh, that can help us with our day-to-day -day issues um, in-house as well as to our customers. Now, if you look at the, um, at the presentation over here, what you see is that, well, supply chain is actually uh, not simple. There, were, there are so many interactions between shippers, customers, 3PLs, carriers, and, and it is basically like a spider web, isn't it? And communication is going back and forth every day just to make sure that everyone sees the same information. So a, a, a typical day in the life of um, um, this supply chain is basically when we receive a booking from, from our vendors to say, please ship uh, 30 CBM of these goods, for example. So when we receive goods, we have to go through many, many stringent checks. For example, is, is the quality of the goods correct? Um, is it in the right quantity? Is it declared in the right weight? Uh, is it supposed to be shipped by air, ocean, uh, for example? We got to do a lot of um, checks on the customer's logistics procedure just to make sure that um, the goods that, that are received are received in the, in the right way. And, and that is basically a very tedious task. And what else what we need to do is to do a lot of validations like I mentioned earlier. Uh, was it delivered in the right quantity, for example? 
um, is, is it in the right weight? Uh, were they should, supposed to ship from the factory or were they supposed to consolidate? So we need to do a lot of um, manual uh, checks just to make sure that the cargo is in, in the correct state. And once it comes to planning now, planning is, is, is a science basically if you look at it. Um, do I consolidate two bookings together so that they go to a final destination? Uh, do I mix various vendors from, for example, Vietnam into one container? Or um, do I use an uh, air mode, for example, because the lead time is too short? There's a lot of decision making. And um, before this project that we embarked on, uh, many of these decisions have been made uh, very manually in the process. Um, we do basically manual planning and then we group orders together. Once we decided which carrier to use, uh, what we do is that we enter these plans into emails and we send the email off to, to our customers. So um, with many of our customers, uh, they are residing either in Europe or basically in US, for example, the decision point is from there. So it takes time. It takes maybe another eight hours to, to 12 hours before they wake up and they start looking at their emails. And once they receive the emails, now they got to check their own inventory. Do I need this cargo here on, uh, at this particular time, this particular date? Um, and they make decisions about the, the cargo. Do I use this particular carrier based on what APR proposed or APR logistics proposed, or do I use one which is another one week sailing uh, um, um, or postpone the sailing by one week, for example. So many, many of these decisions are made and, and this is basically taking a lot of time. Um, and if there's any exceptions, for example, again, he's using email to communicate and uh, we all know email is not a very reliable source of communication, let's put it this way, right? So these are, these are all our issues that we face. So what we do is that uh, we, we do understand that there's a lot of manual work and it is very difficult to track what are the communications. You know, as a as a service provider, we always strive to uh, provide the best service for our customers. But at the same time, in order to do that, we need to be able to very efficiently track what we communicate with our customers. Well, if we do miss certain communications and and there, if there are confusions, it can result in a few things. For example, um, you could basically uh, be late for for hand over to the carriers. If that happens, basically. Um, air freight, for example, which is going to be really costly, right? So um, we, we also face issue with a lot of our customers um, in, the, in the last uh, three years, for example, as you know, economy has not been doing well. Every company is going through certain form of downsizing. So, um, and many companies are looking to basically load um, more work onto their staff and basically at the same time, you cut more headcounts, basically. So everyone needs a more efficient way to work. And, and that's why we started to look for certain solutions that will address these issues. Now, if you look at planning, it is complex. Every business is different and every business is, has its own complexity. Well, this is some extract from one customer. Um, you know, they're living to different places in, in, in US, for example, it could be in Europe. Uh, we have customers in US and Europe and, and they operate in a similar, similar manner. They have different rules, you know, things like I have launch products which are urgent, it needs to go there. Please do not mix it with launch products, for example, because once it clear customs, I don't want the launch products to be, to be held on delay, for example, because of other products, for example. Or there could be certain ways to load cargo because of how they want to push cargo into their stores. Um, you can you mix um, uh, footwear with apparels, for example, or even up to um, can I mix certain types of uh, commodities because they are flammable, for example, with a particular type of uh, um, flammable object, for example. So as, as, as by and large, what you see is that there are so many different types of rules uh, that we need to think of when we ship. But the thing is that these rules change very, very rapidly. So you could have basically rules changing once every, every, every month, for example. And how do you manage this? Uh, once rules come in, you've got to disseminate to everyone in your organization to tell them, from, from Vietnam to Shanghai to, to, lot, um, to for example, um, Turkey, for example, and make sure that the whole organization is, is synchronized and everybody obeys the same logistic procedure so that we can follow customers' rules. And that is not going to be simple. So what we, what we decided is that we need to automate uh, these, these activities and we need to find a tool that provides us with this flexibility. So in our goal um, to look for a tool, uh, what we looked for is that we wanted to look for an off-the-shelf product. Um, we can obviously um, build this from scratch, but I think if we have done that, maybe we have not finished the project yet. This, this is going to be too complex to build from scratch. So what we're looking for is an off-the-shelf tool, which is flexible and highly configurable. 
and it must allow the LSP to communicate with our customers so that we can make shipping decisions together. Um, looking at the uh, operations, the, the system must allow us to basically be more productive. Productivity is a key at APL Logistics and, and we advocate that the system must be able to standardize processes so that we can quickly pass the processes down to the various operational countries uh, around the world. And uh, of course we need to have advanced functionality to um, automatically comply to customers' requirements. For example, how do you collot certain items together? How do you route the cargo? Um, and we, we wanted to have uh, automatic planning instead of doing manual planning because it is getting um, very out of hand in, in terms of how you uh, were to plan consistently from one location to another. So we are looking for a planning algorithm that can do it with consistency and as well as with accuracy. And lastly, uh, we need it to have also the audit trail capabilities, communications between customers and, and APL Logistics, different instructions passing by. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, email isn't the best way to, to search. Some, sometimes you've got to go back to the email, oh, what did the customer say two days ago? Did I execute it in the right way? Um, was, was the message passed down from, from, the, the, from the supervisors to the operators, for example? And, and, and we needed some audit trail capabilities in the system that provides us that flexibility. As well as orders change every day, quantities change, date commitments for, uh, to the destination chains every day. We need a way to be able to um, track these changes and basically ch uh, change our planning as, as the supply chain changes. Um, lastly, of course, we need to be able to deploy this uh, rapid, uh, repeatedly. Now, we can always start to build more, what I call as Mona Lisa, right? It's a very nice piece of um, work, but it's just for one customer and you can't use that for another customer. Um, and that's not going to be very efficient because as a 3PL, we have more than three, 4,000 customers uh, just for consolidation alone, not to mention freight forwarding, for example. So whatever design and product that we use, it has to be repeatable so that we can very, very rapidly uh, onboard any customers uh, onto our platform. So we went through a, a phrase of selecting a product. Um, I must say we've went through about at least six, seven products and many of them were our major names that you probably heard like Oracle obviously, SAP, i2 and different type of uh, JDA for example, different types of tools that um, provide these transport management type services but we have decided on Oracle OTM and, and the reason for that is that this is a system which is very configurable, very flexible and it basically allows us to configure the, the supply chain in various different ways. For example, um, what are the equipments we can use, the different specifications of equipment, um, how, do you load equi uh, how do you load and manage allocations for equipment, for example. Um, we are able to manage various types of locations in the supply chain, whether it's a shipper, it's, a, it's an ocean port, it's an airport, uh, it's a CFS at origin or destination, it's a delivery point, for example. Um, OTM provides us with that flexibility to manage all, all this uh, master data per se, right? Uh, in terms of routing, OTM again provides many ways of doing uh, itineraries, for example, that allows us to build a network of how we service our clients. Um, in terms of uh, rates management, OTM provides all the different types of rates that support uh, our ocean operations, our air operations, uh, as well as our multimodal operations. So this, this system, in, in other words, is very flexible and we, we found that uh, we are able to model many, many of our um, supply chain scenarios in, in, into the system to service our clients. So after looking through various, various um, uh, softwares, uh, we decided that this system uh, provides us with the most flexibility. If you look at um, our so far three, three and a half year journey, uh, we have accomplished pretty much uh, with, with Oracle OTM as a tool and it started to bring us uh, as a differentiator in the market. So if you look at our footprint in, OT, uh, in OTM, I think Derek would love to, to, to look at this because you're counting the countries basically. Uh, we have a footprint now to up to about 137 uh, locations worldwide already using um, our solution to service our clients. And it is growing day by day as we continue to onboard different customers onto this platform and continuously training our uh, various operations uh, worldwide mm -hmm. basically to to use this solution. So if you look at um, the if you look at the where we started from, we purchased um, OTM on 2009. Um, that's when we started a pilot project uh, which is called Shipment Optimizer. I'm gonna talk about it uh, in a while, right? 
Um, once we managed to, what we managed to do is that we managed to implement this for one of the world's largest um, sports and apparel company delivering from Asia um, to North America, Latin America, as well as Canada. Um, from there, we, we continued on to uh, onboard different customers. We have, uh, for example, footwear, manufac uh, footwear manufacturers from, from based out of uh, Germany, for example. Uh, we also have uh, fashion and apparel from, from Europe. Um, that has been done as well in 2012. Uh, we have also branched out into land transport management. Um, we started off with a uh, chemical company in US, and, and that particular company uh, has already also awarded their business to us for Asia, and we are at this moment um, implementing TMS for this particular customer uh, in, in, in Shanghai. And it is going to manage uh, their supply chain uh, domestic transportation within, uh, within China itself. So as you can see um, from, from, from this chart, um, uh, this three-year journey has been a very fruitful one and we have been continuously being able to win uh, businesses using, uh, using OTM. So what do we really use OTM for? Um, the next two parts of the presentation, we're going to look at two different aspects of how we use OTM. Uh, one is basically land transportation, which I think many of you in Europe, uh, because of the way Europe is, is one big continent, uh, is using, using it very heavily. And, and we are also doing uh, pretty much the same. Um, with OTM, what we do is basically we, we, we basically receive orders from our customers through uh, e, uh, EDI, and we basically integrate that to OTM. Um, but that is not the only way uh, we integrate orders because orders move very, very fast and we need different ways to get orders into the system. So what we do have basically are various ways um, to, to get orders into the system. Uh, we have this thing called mass uploads. You know, you can build spreadsheets, um, get your order information in them and then you rapidly load this into what we call as bug loading into the uh, OTM system uh, so they can create orders as your demands. Uh, we also have created um, manual entry screen so that you can do very quick mass data entry on, on OTM so that you can basically get your orders into the system. And lastly, uh, we, we started using uh, order templates so that you can capture different requirements between different types of inbound orders, for example. So you can see from, from this particular screen, this is one of the templates we use uh, for one customer. For example, we can capture their business units, their business segments. Um, we can decide um, different types of rules, for example, uh, different different purchase order types, uh, whether it's import, export order, and, and various other types of um, uh, um, order attributes are recorded basically on hand. So whenever we receive a call uh, for a particular order, our operators will key this in, or they will use an Excel spreadsheet and load this in. And, and this has dramatically improved our, our efficiencies as a company. And what um, OTM provides us is basically different ways of uh, doing planning. So truck planning is, is again a very complex, um, a, a very, very complex way of uh, trying to ship cargo from point A to B. Now it's not just sh shipping it from point A to B, you have to make many decisions. For example, do I actually just ship it direct like that? Or uh, do you multi-stop it? What are the costs to do multi-stop for example? Do I do uh, deconsolidation? Right, oh, we are currently using OTM to do such, such stuff. Basically, um, this particular customer is in, um, I mentioned earlier, in, in US. Uh, they're using our, our TMS system, uh, based our OTM to do this type of planning, and basically we're rolling it, this out in, uh, in Shanghai for North, uh, for North China. Um, the same processes, basically, we are also using in Europe. Um, uh, Chris, sitting over here, is managing the um, Europe TMS project, and basically we are getting one of a very large um, apparel company, uh, up onto our TMS platform as well, managing uh, supply chain flow in a very, very similar, consistent manner. If you look at um, our TMS solution, what we managed to do is to um, offer uh, our customers a view of what the supply chain is going to cost them when they make a certain decision. So for example, if you can look over here, what you have basically is what we call as a um, best direct cost. That means if every single order were to go direct ship from point A to point B, how much would that cost? And basically, when we plan sh certain shipments together, um, we OTM will automatically rate what the service is going to cost, and it's going to compare this cost against the direct cost. So if you look over here, um, we use workflow in the system basically to compare direct cost versus um, the actual cost of consolidation, 
And what the system does is basically it basic com uh, computes the cost savings. So using this um, workflow and, and these parameters, um, the operators are able to make very, very smart routing decisions. So if you see that zero, what it means there is that technic um, these are all direct routes. There is no cost saving, but however, we gain, uh, we gain um, certain cost saving over here when we do, for example, um, deconsolidation through intermodal. So um, the system again is very flexible, able to give us um, different tools to set up these va various KPIs for us to measure when we do planning. So we're not talking about strategic planning like what um, Derek is talking about um, earlier on Monday. We're talking about um, dynamic planning as you, as you get your, your cargo in, as you know how much it weighs, how much distance you need to cover, you make dynamic decisions on the go. And this is what we aim to do. So let's look at a case study of uh, what we managed to achieve uh, for this particular customer. So this, this customer we're talking about is in uh, chemical agriculture type of um, um, uh, industry, uh, 38 billion annual sales yearly. And we have been in relationship with this customer since 1995. Um, the services that we provide with our customers is basically we provide them with uh, on-site support. Um, some of our APR logistic colleagues actually work within the, um, the customer's office uh, to provide the close support that they require and basically they provide the uh, what we call as uh, CSR functionality which is customer service functionality and basically we look at different modes of shipments we manage their carrier contracts um, and, and we look at how to optimize their, their fleet because they, they have their own private fleet and we look at how to um, look at the returns of, of the containers as well so what this customer face um, is, is this, is that they, they, were an, um, uh, they were an OTM uh, user as well. They were on a very, very old version of OTM, version 4, and that didn't have a lot of functionalities that, that they actually require uh, to do the things that they need. And um, it is coming to end of life uh, during the, the point when we're doing deployment with the customer. Um, he had two decisions to make. Should he just continue to use OTM? or he will basically decide not to use OTM anymore and seek an alternate TMS solution. So what, what happened was that uh, since APL Logistics is already using OTM, and we, we allowed the customer basically to say, why not you outsource your, your, your TM solutions to us? Uh, you use our solution instead of, uh, of using your own. So they onboarded to our uh, OTM version 623. So the solution for TM basically is to improve their North America transportation planning and, uh, and with that, that success that we managed to, to gain with that customer, the customer actually has awarded us with the China piece of business and we have now been are, are, are in the process of deploying a TM solution for this customer in, in Asia. And um, with this implementation, what we do is um, we manage all aspects of the, of the implementation, uh, EDI connectivity with uh, more than 200, uh, 200 uh, carriers worldwide and if you look over on your left side basically um, OTM support various type of services for example optimizing uh, daily activities across different modes uh, different transportation we also use uh, FTI basically to uh, provide uh, business intelligence through KPIs uh, we have parcel management implemented in the system uh, we use continuous move basically to route different cargos uh, as they go through different uh, point of exchange, for example. So it is um, a very comprehensive system that we have built for our customers. So um, what is the benefit that it has brought to our customer is this, more automation and basically less manual work. Um, a lot of work um, when they were previously doing was on Excel spreadsheet. I think many of you would agree with me that Technically speaking, Excel spreadsheets are, are the super tools in the world. They are the best TMS system, but they are also the worst TMS system in the world. It's very flexible, but you can make so much mistakes with that. Now with OTM, basically we have eliminated Excel spreadsheets. Um, planners are all planning in the system what they make decisions. The decisions that they, that they make basically have been um, uh, tracked and audited in the system. And basically, we have a full picture of the supply chain cost. In the past, with Excel spreadsheets, you got to look at various uh, costing sheets, for example, uh, contract A, what is, the, what is the freight rate from point A to point B, what are, the, uh, what are the surcharges, and you have to manually calculate that into the spreadsheets, and then you manually update this. With OTM, you no longer need to do that. System auto-rates the, the services, and basically the operators just need to check to make sure that um, we, are, we are basically choosing the correct uh, service to, to apply. 
um, in terms of carrier compliances, we are also able to track uh, each carrier's uh, performance as well as their commitments at a shipment level. And, and this is going to be very key because as, the, as our customers continue to source for uh, two PLs, truckers basically, as well as they are managing their own fleet, uh, they are able to make sure that whatever we plan is going against a particular commitment. And when it comes to contract season, they will not have an issue with, with different carriers saying that, oh, we, we are not going to give you this good price because you, you didn't give us enough volume, for example. That the volume has been balanced across various trade lanes. So using OTM, basically, we have been able to strengthen our relationship uh, with this customer and, and continue to grow together with this customer. Any questions before I move on? Silence means no, I guess. <laughs> okay, so um, that's on the land sector. We're going to talk about another differentiating product that uh, APL Logistic has put onto the market. Now, before I go into the details, I'd like to play you a, a, a video. Since the very first voyage, people have been sending products from one place to another. The economies of the world are all connected by a dizzying maze of trade lanes connecting sea and air routes to roads and railways. Stuck in the middle of this chaos are hard-working companies. And at these hard-working companies are overworked people trying to maintain a competitive edge by reviewing schedules, comparing shipping rates, sweating need dates, calculating container utilization, and hoping they've kept track of all their business rules. Ah, wouldn't it be great if there was a solution? An innovative solution somewhere using dynamic web-based algorithms and these algorithms could take an almost unlimited maze of business rules and shipping parameters and continually analyze them against multimodal transportation routes and let's say automatically maximize load utilization instantly calculate lead times determine optimal routing take all business rules into consideration and continually do it all throughout the shipping process presto that's Shipment Optimizer from APL Logistics. Shipment Optimizer is an automated decision tool that can automatically approve shipments based on rules you set, no matter how complex, and automatically stops a shipment that doesn't meet your business rules. Shipment Optimizer's automated decision tool works away in the background. So if your company experiences change in product demand, you can quickly change the rules to adjust the flow or change the direction of shipments. So, if you're ready to improve your efficiency and margins and become more competitive on product pricing by improving container utilization, reducing unnecessary air freight, optimizing transportation routes, and gaining greater control of your product flow, then contact your APL Logistics representative or email us at shipmentoptimizer at aplogistics.com. So this is a product um, that we put into the market um, in the early part of um, two, 2010 to 11. So um, it's called Shipment Optimizer and it has been a joint collaboration with Oracle in terms of getting the um, product working in terms of the way it does optimization, especially for ocean. So if you look at um, the product that we actually put out, um, it, what it does is that it does planning, like every one of us over here for our, does for our company, but it, what it does is that it uh, obeys business rules. There are many business rules um, that has been set up uh, to operate for various regions, for example. We have clients that uh, have different rules for Latin America, for, for, for um, uh, North America, for example, but within North America, for example, when you deliver to a store or you deliver to a DC, um, the rules are different. Um, if you deliver to Europe, for example, again, um, the, the rules are different. So I may have one customer that, that have eight different or nine different uh, rules for each different region, for example, and that is quite a, a challenge to manage. So what we did is that uh, we managed to build business rules in the system, uh, primarily using a lot of workflows um, that, that OTM provides. And once we set up these rules, we can flexibly assign these rules to, to different customers. And with these rules, basically, we are also able to manage changes. So when a customer change, 
um, the, the supply chain, um, they are able to mix certain commodities together, for example, or they decide there is a different way to route cargo, we can very quickly switch our supply chain configuration in OTM to suit that business rule. And what happens is that from this central source of change, it will traverse down to the various regions uh, in our sourcing countries um, so that they basically are able to execute it or in a consistent and correct manner. Now that gives customer uh, reliability because we, the customer knows that uh, we are very consistent in the way that we plan. Um, cargo is going in at the right way they want it. So once in fact uh, we have a customer that um, delivers direct to store, um, we are able to load these rules in the system and allow the system to build uh, uh, full truck loads directly to uh, full full container loads sorry directly to the store in a particular way that the store needs it when it offloads the cargo for example right um, the system does this thing called dynamic routing I'm going to talk a little bit more about what dynamic routing means and while it does dynamic routing um, it uses a planning algorithm uh, which we work together with Oracle to, to develop uh, basically to come up with the best equipment mix. Do I use 20 footers? Do I use 40 footers? How many of each would I use um, in order to ship it to, uh, to the customers? Um, the tool provides us these capabilities. Um, other than that, when you look at the screens, um, it's very informative. Uh, any type of information that you require to make a supply chain decision uh, is available on the screen. So may it be booking exceptions um, when a customer needs to authorize a shipment to say, please go ahead to ship it. Uh, he has all the necessary information from orders, from, from vessel voyage information, for example, arrival dates, uh, departure dates, uh, to make that decision. It is all available on the screen. And it allows us to collaborate. We have basically 100% drop email communication with, with many of these customers that collaborate via Shipment Optimizer. If you look at these business rules um, during a typical bulk plan, what the bulk plans consider is uh, compatibilities, for example. Uh, in this example, what you see is that the system will decide how am I going to break the different orders um, to console together. Uh, orders are, which are not compatible together, for example, the system will not put them in, in the same container. So with that, what we mean is that um, to, to customers are ensured that whenever our operators plan, is always consistent and we don't uh, have many surprises for our customers because system plans it in a very consistent and concise manner. Next is uh, dynamic routing. Um, we have various delivery locations for one customer, for example. You could be going Ocean Direct, for example, whether it's Inter-Asia, uh, TP Trade Lane, or transatlantic, you know, various types of trade lanes that the customer use, um, the system is able to utilize them and is able to compare based on lead time, should I use ocean or should I use air? And that is done dynamically during the bulk plan. And if it is um, um, enough time to do um, ocean, it will typically pick that because it looks at the cost and it decides which is the cheapest cost to do so. However, it also looks at time. If there isn't sufficient time, for example, to deliver cargo from Singapore, let's say, to Los Angeles, because it's less than 18 days to do it, um, it will decide whether air is, is, is feasible or not. And if air is, is feasible, but it's too expensive, uh, we basically have various types of services. Basically, for example, uh, Air Sea. Uh, we have one operations, for example, that goes out from Dubai, um, that you can basically ship your cargo to... Um, uh, via sea first to Dubai and then we can air it to final destination or you can do the reverse you can do an air to a certain location and then you see it the other way so that's basically a catch-up service so what we allow the system to do is it allows the system to dynamically look look at your weight your volume your pricing uh, your lead time and it decides which is the best route to go and this is done not on a strategic standpoint but on a dynamic standpoint um, in during the shipping process and in the shipping process we're talking about very very short lead time from the time you receive the cargo from from the shipper uh, typically you have less than 10 days to make this decision this this important decision and and the tool allows our operators as well as our customers to very quickly and dynamically make this decision together now um, no planning system is going to be complete without a very strong planning algorithm and we all know OTM has many many very good um, algorithms that we can utilize but of course when we start to use them in various scenarios it may not always give you the results that you want 
um, when we started this project, we faced many of these issues. That was when we engaged Oracle to help us investigate uh, what's wrong. Um, we were using very linear, traditional um, CONOP uh, uh, algorithms uh, that Oracle provide out of the box. Now that works um, for maybe about 70% of the time when we were initially using it. And, and for 30% of the time, we see a lot of issues with uh, consolidations. It was spinning out too many 20 footers and we have no idea why. Um, when we investigated to, together with Oracle, what we found was that uh, it, it has a, the, it has a, a, the reason is because of the way um, the optimization engine thinks. Um, in typical, sh um, if I were to string down the technicalities, what essentially a, the, the planning algorithm does is basically first you, you bundle orders together based on uh, OD pair, based on need dates, based on origin required date, destination required dates, based on a particular range, for example. And each group of um, each bundle of order will look for certain kind of vessel schedules that it can meet. But within a bundle, for example, there are certain occasions that um, in a particular bundle, one or two orders do not uh, meet that particular timeline. Maybe three of the orders are able to reach that on time, but one particular order is, let's say, two days late. When that happens, what the algorithm does is that it actually breaks the whole bundle up and that basically results in multiple 20 footers. So this, this problem was actually identified during the project and um, um, the engineers in, in uh, Oracle OTM basically devised a different way uh, to think, uh, to, to, to manage this because in ocean world, uh, you basically cannot have too many 20 footers, it's, it's too expensive. Um, it cannot use a very linear uh, way of looking at uh, container optimization. So this particular enhancement was done in the Oracle product, which we, we like to call it as schedule-aware con, uh, container optimization. So what happens in this process is that there is still bundling happening, but when, whenever a bundle um, is, is created, each order within the bundle actually looks at a, various, a variety of vessel schedules. Each, each order actually looks at um, five or six schedules that it can, it can be shipped on, and when the system uh, tries to console this order together, it will look for the most common ones and it consoles the orders together. When that happens is that uh, the, the algorithm doesn't break certain bundles or rather it doesn't bundle certain things together when it's not supposed to. So that part actually solved, um, a, 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 that change in the algorithm actually uh, managed to um, solve a lot of our issues. And uh, when we look at the, uh, combine that together with um, price and lead time, uh, what we managed to do is to bring our optimization re uh, results up to as high as about 95%. There's always maybe a 2 to 5% chance that you still don't, don't, don't get a very good optimization results, but it is very, very little. And uh, we are able to efficiently just use this, this system to do optimization using this particular um, um, schedule-aware CONOPS um, algorithm that Oracle has introduced in the product. I think it was there since uh, six version 6 or version uh, six, six two. I, I can't remember at the exact versions, but um, we, we kind of, uh, after the, doing this project with Oracle, we got a certain coding that was applied onto our version of OTM. We used it for about three months, and on success, basically, it was actually applied onto the main uh, service release for um, OTM. Now, um, other than optimization, which is a key part of planning, uh, exception management is very key, and and basically what we have done in, before we use a tool like OTM is that we use our eyes to check. So someone will open two screens basically, purchase order screen, booking screens, shipping screens, and basically we need to detect what is wrong. And we do this by hand, following a very thick Excel spreadsheet like a telephone book, right? Um, but with OTM now, we use workflow again very efficiently. What we've done is that um, system will detect various non-compliances with shipments and it will basically flag it out uh, to, the, to the customers. So you can see over here there is a screen, we have many of these things called EBA, what we call EBAs are in this company as uh, exception booking authorization. System will detect, for example, uh, well this is supposed to be shipped by air as requested by a customer but you have changed the route, for example, of this ocean, um, you have been planned onto air. So that brings uh, uh, awareness and alert to customers. Uh, or for example, um, when it was purchased, that, that particular piece of cargo was item A in this particular description, but when you actually received the booking from the vendors, something went wrong. It was a different item. 
and the system is able to detect, detect these differences and show, as you can see over here in the screen, uh, the different exceptions. Um, it's searchable through the search criteria as well as it appears in the work queues uh, via the business monitor. So what we have been essentially doing is basically exception management uh, only. Anything that basically do not have exceptions, basically customers was telling APR Logistics, continue to execute my supply chain. Only on exceptions, basically, they are intervening. So what, what benefits the customer is that if you look at the customer, some of these customers are either trying to downsize their team. With that, with these, these activities have been automated, they are able to downsize their supply chain team. On the other aspect, a lot of customers, what they do is they do not downsize their team. But now their team are more productive. They are able to look into other areas to improve their supply chain, for example, like inventory management. Now, um, when we propose shipments to customers as LSPs, we, we've got to look at various aspects, what container you to use. Um, these, are, these are the various types of parameters that we typically need to inform customers. For example, which is the best voyage to use? Uh, what is the vessel voyage? Which is the carrier? Um, what is the utilization of the equipment? Uh, we also need to, to trigger the approvals over to them. And we actually have worked out with many of our customers um, this thing called automatic approval. And it's been working out very well for many clients. So once we set up business rules um, that we can agree on to customers and say, for example, if a particular um, voyage, for example, is using containers that is up to maybe, let's say, 80 or 90% utilization, well, it depends on trade lanes and it depends on customers and it depends on um, um, where you are sending to, we're able to set up these different rules in the system. And if it meets these criteria, these shipments are actually automatically approved. So in, in other words, the customers, um, planners do not need to get involved in the supply chain. And APL logistics will automatically ship it in this particular way. So what it means is that there is productivity gain on the customers. They do not need to spend so much time looking at uh, shipments. Uh, we have a customer in the past, what we realized when we did a study at KPI on shipments that we sent for approval and their acceptance rate, what we realized is 80% of the time when we say, please approve this, the answer is, go ahead. There is no value add in this interaction, basically, and you need to wait 48 hours, 24 hours to do so. Now, with the system, what it, uh, what it managed to do for us is basically gain this productivity, automatically ship things, um, which are supposed to ship in a particular, very consistent manner with a good cost. And for things that are not uh, in a good cost or there are exceptions, we push it for customers to make decisions. And basically, with this interaction, we are also doing it in, in the system. So if you look at, um, this is an example of some of the, uh, the, the auto-release rules I'm talking about. For example, we can control in the system if a particular container for 20 footer reaches a particular uh, weight or volume, whether it's factory load or APL logistic load, uh, we are able to auto-approve it, for example. This is just one example of the rules that we use. Um, in terms of authorization, earlier we mentioned that many of these authorization has been done uh, via email, email. And it takes typically about 8 to 12 hours for the, for the vendors to, uh, for the customers to respond. And basically after they respond, we've got to wait, wait for Origins to wake up before they can execute this. And, and this whole process typically takes about 24 to 48 hours to complete. Um, with the system now, we have much flexibility that we can use. Once we have this very informative screen and we are sharing the same information as our, to our customers as what we see out ourselves, uh, we are able to say, customer, can you please uh, proceed to ship it? And we can put in various types of remarks uh, on the screen. We use actually the mass updates uh, functionality in, in OTM to quickly go from one shipment to another to, to trigger um, some of these instructions. And for example, this, this particular example we, we, we look at over there is that the uh, origin planner have triggered a booking for authorization to a customer saying that this is already the fastest vessel available. It's either this or going by air freight. So it, it's very informative and the customers can look at various types of um, uh, shipments at one go. And what he wants to do next is to just look at the exceptions and say, okay, for this particular one, approve, go ahead and ship it. Or this particular one, no, uh, hold it. Um, I want to ship it in a different way. So this form of communication has been very, very successful. Um, because of the economic situation as well, um, we have customers, for example, that already made their production planning. Uh, the cargo has been already available, ready to ship, but they realize that they do not have enough space in their DC back home. 
So with this, once they know their demand issues uh, or, or supply issues uh, or storage issues at, at the destination, they are able to also use the system and say, uh, don't, do not ship, please hold this cargo, for example, for another two weeks, let, the, let, they, let them solve their own cargo situation and then later on, they'll go back to the system and say, push, uh, ready to ship, please proceed with shipment. So that's why we mentioned, if you look at the video earlier, what it mentioned is that you are able to control the supply chain to go forward or go backward or basically to put the supply chain on hold. So the system now gives you this flexibility in communication and control. And it, this is a very powerful way to, to work. So this is again um, work cues that we use to uh, collaborate with customers so that we make sure that every single thing that we need to uh, get appro approval from customers, we get it. Um, and we basically share a same repository. OTM provides the global database uh, that everybody is looking at the same piece of information. So we'll talk, we are talking about the single source of truth. Okay, it's the same thing. Then in terms of our audit trail, for example, we have used many of these remarks to track um, various collaboration between um, customers and LSP. So when I say, please ship in this particular way, a customer may tell you, please change it to any footer, who said this, what time, and everything is, is tracked in the system. So if you look at um, a case study of uh, a usage or shipment optimizer, what happened is this, if you, if you look at this, this chart over here, you can basically see that there are many markets around the world, but it's not balanced. Uh, many of the su uh, supplying sources in, 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 the, uh, in the east and many consumption is in the west. But consumption patterns have been changing uh, in this, these three years basically due to the economy crisis, due to floods, due to um, um, rising source of income in Asia for example. Um, the way that you would typically manage and bring cargo from east to the west has, has been changing quite a lot. And, and op with Optimizer what happens is that you are able to very, very quickly, in a very, very short amount of time, balance the view between what you need and how to ship it. And, and we believe that this tool uh, has brought customers this benefit in a very short time. So if you look at um, the value that was brought to the customer, basically is yield management and uh, efficiencies in terms of rules, basically. Mm -hmm. So any procedures, any rules which are introduced will be quickly adopted and disseminated to, to different origins and they will plan in the same consistent manner. Planning is truly automated. We are able to cut down decision time from 48 hours to 1.5 hours. Um, and basically after implementing new algorithms, basically we are getting better equipment mix. Basically we are saving money for our customers, um, utilizing more in a container. Um, dynamic dynamic uh, network, like I mentioned earlier, looking at various conditions of the market, we are able to hold, hold shipments, push shipments ahead, or, or basically delay shipments. And um, whenever customers use their ERP, we are always fully connected to their ERPs. Uh, for example, getting their POs in, uh, getting our bookings in, but we'll, what we do after planning is that we will trigger ASNs to our customers so that they know what is coming as well uh, on, on the receiving end. So, um, in, in short, basically, um, Apple Logistics is currently using OTM and we are continuing with our OTM footprint. Um, there are bigger things to come. In fact, um, I can't say this for now, but probably in a, several months later, I think you will hear announcements in the market of what we intend uh, to basically use OTM to, to bring us in, into a higher level. So, um, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you very much.